Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at a warning that you may encounter when working with loop structures. Sometimes when we work with loops, the size of a variable or an array changes with each loop pass, and this can be computationally inefficient. To resolve this, we're going to take a look at variable preallocation using the zeros function. First, I'll introduce you to the concept of preallocation. Then we'll take a look at a flowchart to visualize how the size of an array can change with each loop pass. Finally, we'll implement the zeros function to preallocate an array inside of MATLAB. In this video, we're going to use for loops and array indexing. So if you're unfamiliar with these concepts, I'd recommend checking out my four part series on for loops, links to which can be found in the description below. Let's get started. If you're fairly new to programming, particularly in MATLAB, you may have encountered this warning before when working with loops. The variable, variable name, appears to change size on every loop iteration within a script. Consider preallocating for speed, and you may wonder what does this warning mean? So what is MATLAB trying to tell us? MATLAB is saying that the size of the indicated variable or array appears to be changing with each loop iteration. And this message often appears because an array is growing by assignment or concatenation, often inside of a loop. So why do we care about this? It's because growing an array by assignment or concatenation is computationally expensive. For large arrays, MATLAB must allocate a new block of memory and copy the older array contents to the new array as it makes each assignment. Programs that change the size of a variable in this way can spend most of their runtime in this inefficient activity. So how do we remedy this? MATLAB tells us to consider pre-allocating or defining the size of, in advance, a variable or array before entering the loop by using the zeros, ones, cell, or similar functions. My personal preference is to use the zeros function, and that's what we'll use today. So here's our example. We're going to write a script file to evaluate the function y, where y is equal to x squared, for x is equal to 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, and we're going to do so using a for loop. Here's the traditional structure of a for loop, and here is how we would implement our example without preallocation. This is something we're going to address today. So first we start with our independent variable. Here we have a row array for x i is our loop variable, which is also serving as our array index, which has an initial value of 1, a step value of 1, and a final value of n, where n is equal to the length of x, and that determines the number of elements inside of the row array x. In this case, there are five elements. And for each loop pass, we will evaluate y. Now let's take a look at a flow chart to demonstrate each loop pass and how our dependent variable y is changing sizes with each iteration. Our first step in the program is to initialize our row array for x and the number of elements in that array. Next, our loop variable, which is also serving as our array index, has an initial value of 1, which is not greater than our final value of 5, which corresponds to the number of elements in the array x. This statement is false, and we evaluate our statement for y. Our first element in the array y is assigned the value of the first element in the array x squared, and y now has a value of 0, 
And what we want to consider today is the number of elements inside of the array y. Now at this point in time, the length of y is one, which means there is one single element, which right now has a value of zero. But we're going to watch how the size or the number of elements inside of this array is going to change with each loop pass. So next, we increment our loop variable or array index by one. i now has a value of two. Our current value of i is not greater than our final value of i, which is false, and we start our second loop pass. Now the second element in y is assigned the value of the second element in x squared, and our second element in the array y has a value of four. Now what's really important if we take a look at our command window here is that now there are two elements in the array y instead of one. In other words, the size of the array has actually changed. Next, we're gonna increment our loop variable i by one again, and we're going to complete three more loop passes. So here is our third loop pass. Notice we've added another element to y. Our fourth loop pass, again adding another element to y. And our fifth and final loop pass, again adding another element to y. Now after our fifth loop pass, our current value of i is six, which is greater than five, corresponding to the number of elements in x. This statement is true, and our for loop ends. So the big takeaway here is that the size or the number of elements in our array for y is changing with each loop pass, and this is using additional computational resources. This is something that we're going to address by pre-allocating the size of y before we get to our for loop. So let's jump over to MATLAB to see how we can do this. First, we're going to open a new script file, and our MATLAB editor opens and we're ready to begin our program. And I want to note that first, we're going to write this script without pre-allocating the size of our dependent variable y. So that way we can see how the size of y changes with each loop pass. So our first step is going to be to initialize our independent variable x, which is a row array with a initial value of zero, a step value of two, all the way up until our final value of eight, and I'm going to suppress this line. Next, we're going to determine the number of elements inside of our row array x, and we're going to do so using our length function which counts the number of elements inside of our array. And now we're ready to begin our for loop without pre-allocating our variable y. So we start with for our loop variable, which is also serving as our array index, which has an initial value of one, a step value of one, in a final value of n, which corresponds to the number of elements inside of the array x. Next, we're ready to um, evaluate our statement for y. And notice here we're using an index so that we can store a value for y corresponding to each value of x. And y is assigned the value of the current value of x squared, and I'm not going to suppress this line so that way when we run the program, we can see the result output to the command window. Next, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use the pause command here. 
So when MATLAB gets to this line, when the program is run, it is going to literally pause before moving on to the next loop pass. Then I will click end and that is it. So next we will click run, give our program a name. I'm gonna call it preallocate underscore variable. And when I click save, the program will run, but not to completion. So what we can see here, if I make my command window a little bit bigger here, is that we have performed one single loop pass and the program has paused. And you probably won't be able to see this because the text is rather small, but at the very bottom left of our screen here, MATLAB says the program is paused and press any key to continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click enter here and we can see here is our second loop pass. And the big thing here is notice that Y now has two elements. So the length of Y is two and the size of Y, it's a one row by two column array. So then we have our third loop pass. Again, I clicked enter there, our fourth loop pass, and our fifth loop pass. And the really key thing here is that the size of Y is changing, which is computationally inefficient. So let's look at how to resolve this problem. Before we modify our program, let's take a look at the warnings that MATLAB is giving us. So if we go on the right hand side of our editor, there are some warnings that have been found. And we'll go all the way down till we see this orange bar and MATLAB is giving us two warnings. First is the variable Y appears to change size on every loop iteration. Consider preallocating for speed. This is the warning we're going to address. And the second one is to terminate this statement with a, with a semicolon to suppress the output. We're going to ignore this. We are intentionally outputting the value of Y for each loop pass. Now, before we begin, we begin modifying our program. First, we're going to clear our variables in the workspace. Notice on the right hand side, we have our four variables and Y has already been defined because our program has run. So we need to kind of get rid of this. So to do that, we can go to the command window and type clear and click enter. And this clears all of our variables from the workspace, which gives us a fresh start. Next, let's look at how to modify this program by pre-allocating our dependent variable Y. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here and we're going to pre-allocate, which really means pre-define the size of our variable Y in advance. And we're going to do this using the zeros function. That is my personal preference, though you could also use the ones function. And I'll explain what this is going to do. So we use our zeros function and what this is going to do is it's going to set up in our an array where each element inside of the array has a value of zero. Now we know what the size of our array for Y should be and that is because for each element inside of X, we should have a corresponding element inside of Y. So Y is going to be a row array that contains one row and the same number of columns as X. So what this is going to give us is it's going to give us a row array with one row and five columns, the same number of columns inside of X and each element inside of that array is going to have a value of zero. So next what I'm going to do is I'll click enter here and again use the pause command. That way when I run this program, MATLAB will pause at line five before getting to the for loop so we can see this pre-allocation. 
So now I'm going to click run and MATLAB has paused. We can see that in the command window and here is our pre allocation. So now the size of our array Y has been defined in advance. So we have a row array with one single row and five columns, just like our row array for X. Now our program is currently paused, so I'm going to press enter here to continue. And what you will see here is Y evaluated for our first loop pass. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed here. It actually has, and that's because our first element inside of the array Y was assigned the value of the first element inside of the array X, which happened to be zero squared. So you'll actually start to see changes here on our second loop pass. Now, Here's our second loop pass. And the really big thing here is that the size of this array has not changed. It is still one row with five columns, but the value of the second element has updated on our second loop pass. So now I'm going to click enter, our third loop pass, our fourth loop pass, and finally, our fifth and final loop pass. So notice here, we have the exact same result, but the size of the array Y did not change with each loop pass. So this is much more computationally efficient. Thanks for watching. You can find me at David Calamus on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you liked this video and would like to see more, subscribe below.